This video shows some algebra skills that you might need to remember before taking a calculus class. First, um, is the square of a binomial. So if you have a binomial a plus b and you square it, you get a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. And this three terms here is called perfect squared trinomial. Do not forget the two times a times b. Most people forget this term. So if you have um, this is 2 plus delta x and you square it, according to the formula, you get 2 squared plus delta x squared plus 2 times 2 times delta x. Okay. And if you simplify it, you will get 4 plus delta x squared plus 4 times delta x as the result. And then if you replace this plus here by a minus then you're gonna replace this plus here by a minus here by a minus here and you replace this plus here by a minus here second factoring so if you have a mathematical expressions and you want to factor this expressions into different factors then the first thing you want to do is you want to find a common term so if you have this example is the common terms of x squared e to the x plus 2 times x times e to the x minus e to the x. The common terms of these terms is e to the x because you have e to the x in all these three terms. Okay. After you identify a common term or common factor, you pull it out or you extract this common factor out and you multiply to. So this is a factor and then you're going to multiply to another factor and how can you get these factors here you get these factors here from this original terms for example look at the first term after you extract e to the x then what left over is x squared second terms the left over should be 2 times x the last term the left over should be negative 1 because negative e to the x is negative 1 times e to the x so you have negative 1 as a last term and now look at another example in this example you have three um, terms three exponents and these terms here have the same base which is x but they have different exponents so this first terms has the exponent of 7 over 5 the second term has the exponent of actually 1 right x is x to the 1 and the third term has the exponent of 4 over 5 so do you want to identify a common term so a common term should be the terms that has the lowest exponent so compare among these three terms, the lowest exponent should be 4 over 5 because 7 over 5 is greater than 4 over 5. 1 is actually 5 over 5, and which is greater than 4 over 5. So then you extract the terms x to the 4 over 5 out, and then look at the third terms. If you extract x to the 4 over 5, then left what left over of x to the 7 over 5 should be x to the 3 over 5 and go to the second term the left over of x to the 5 over 5 should be x to the 1 over 5 and then most of the time people think that they are done at this point but you're wrong remember you have three terms here then after you factor one common terms out you should have three terms here three different terms here that means you need to um, replace this x to the 4 over 5 by 1. Because if you take x to the 4 over 5, then you only have 1 left. Alright, now this time maybe you want to remind yourself some exponent rules. And the first exponent's rule is when you multiply the two exponents of the same base together, then you get 
x times x to a plus b. Okay, you multiply the two exponents with the same base, then you add the two exponents together. How about if you have an exponent x to the a and you want to graze this exponent to the b, then you will have x to the a times b. Okay. If you raise an exponent to another power, then you multiply the two exponents together. How about if you have a division of two exponents, so x to the a divided by x to the b, you will get x to the a minus b. So if you divide the two terms, of the same base, then you subtract the two exponents. All right, these are the three basic exponent rules that you should remember. Now we're going to talk about quadratic equations. If you have an equation in a quadratic form, which is in the form of a times x squared plus b times x plus c equals zero, remember a, b, c are constants are real numbers and x square and x are the variable okay and how can you solve for these equations first if you think that you can factor these three terms then you should factor it first and how can you factor this quadratic uh, form. So in order to factor, remember you have to put these three terms here into factors. Since this is quadratic, the exponents is two, then you only have two factor in the two parentheses here. So x plus or minus a times x plus or minus b. Now we have to find this a and b. Remember this a and b here is not the same as this a and b here. So this a and b are the placeholders for the two numbers that we're going to use to factor this quadratic form. How can we find this little a and b? Based on the rule, a times b has to be equal 6, which is c. And a plus b has to be equals to negative 7. Again, a times b equals to 6 and a plus b equal to negative 7. And what are, what is a pair of a and b that satisfy these two facts? We can find it, which is a can be equals negative 1 and b can be equals negative 6. So negative 1 plus negative 6 is negative 7. Negative 1 times 6 is 6. So then you replace a by negative 1 and b by negative 6. This is factors of this quadratic form. Okay, so you just rewrite this quadratic form into its factors. And then you set it equal zero to solve for these equations here. Um, at this point, you know that if a factor is multiplied to a factor is equal zero, then you can set each factor equal zero. So x mi minus one equals zero, or x minus 6 equals 0. If, because one of the factors equals 0, the whole thing will be equal to 0. So at this point, you can solve for this equations x equals to 1 or x equals to 6. So that's how you use factoring to solve these quadratic equations. If you cannot factor this quadratic form, then you can always use the quadratic formula. So this is the quadratic formula. I hope that you will remember it negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So if you use a quadratic form, then a is 1, b is negative 7, and c is 6. You replace a, b, c into this quadratic formula to get to find x here. So negative b, negative negative 7, plus minus square root of negative 7 squared minus 4 times um, a times c, which is 6 times 1, divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. Solve this form, you will get 
7 plus or minus 5 divided by 2. So then you have two answers. First, 7 plus 5 divided by 2 should be 6. Second, 7 minus 5 divided by 2 should be 1. So you get the same answers using different methods in solving a quadratic equation. Now we're going to talk about some logarithm rules. So if you set y equals log base b, if this equation's equivalence to a raised to y equals b. So this is the definitions of a logarithmic functions or equations. So, and then if you have two logarithmic forms with the same space, and if you add them together, you can just combine these two logarithmic into just one, which is, you still have the same base, log A, and then you take B times C here. Okay. If you subtract the two um, log, expressions then similar to uh, the one up here you have uh, expressions in logarithmic log a of b divided by c and then if you have a log expressions log base a of b raised to c so you see that b this is b power c then you can move the power c in front of the log expressions and you multiply take c multiply to log base a b so these are basic logarithmic rules that you should remember for an example if you want to find what is log base 2, 8, it should be 3 because using the definitions, 2 raised to 3 equals 8. If you combine these two logs together, they have the same base 2, you can just multiply um, 2 times 3 to get log 2, 6. You always keep the base of your log. All right. Now, if you subtract these two logs, again, you keep the base and you take a divided by two, you get log four. Log two, four. And then if you have log base two and three square, you can just move the 2, the power 2, to the front, and you multiply 2 log base 2, 3. Okay. And now if your base is E, then you can replace log base E by natural log ln. And x is just a variable. We know that natural log of 1 is 0 because e to the 0 equals 1. And if you want to combine these two natural logs together, log, natural log of th 2 plus natural log of 3 is going to be the same as natural log of 6. If you subtract these two natural logs, you will get natural log of ax squared divided by x. You simplify it, you will get natural log of ax. And if you have natural log of x squared, it's going to be the same as 2 times natural log of x. Here are some trigonometric functions, like some basic symbol trigonometric functions and some rules. So in trigonometric functions, you learn about sine function, sine of x, cosine of x, tangents of x, cotangents of x, 
secants of x and cosecants of x. So these are just basic trigonometric functions. So first let's talk about unit circle. Unit circle is um is when you use a unit circle to come up with values of sine cosine. So when you use a unit circle the um, horizontal axis should representing for the value of cosine and the vertical axis represents for the value of sine of x. So here's a trick that help you remember s values of some special angles of trigonometry functions. So some special angles are 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, right? And I'm, I want to find the values of sine of x and cosine of x corresponding to this x values. First, I have a row of values, like special values in order from smallest 0 to pi over 2, so I'm the largest. Uh, and then I have sine functions first and then cosine function on the third row. Then I will fill in this square using 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then to the cosine row, I have 3, 4, I have 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. I go from 0 to 4 for sine and I go from 4 to 0 for cosine. And then after that, I square every term and then I divide every term to get the values of sine and cosine of these special angles. For example, if you want to find sine of 0, it should be 0. Square root of 0 divided by 2 should be 0. If you want to find the sine of pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, it would be square root of 3 over 2. If you want to find the cosines of pi over 6, it should be square root of 3 over 2. If you want to find the cosines of pi over 2, so it should be 0. So cosine of pi over 2 should be 0. This is a very good trick that help us remember some values of sine and cosine functions. All right. And then as a reminder, tangent of x is equals to sine of x divided by cosine of x. Cotangent of x is the inverse of tangents, which is equals to cosine of x divided by sine of x. Secant of x equals to 1 over cosine of x and cosecant of x equals to 1 over sine of x.